after Apple launched their Apple Vision Pro, people have gone crazy on Twitter. They're posting so many amazing UI designs of the everyday apps that they use, but made for Vision OS. And I thought that, hey, I might want to do the same. And so I want to redesign Figma's UI, but for Vision OS. So I'll go through Apple's documentation first, like I'll read through whatever they have on spatial design and stuff. And then I'll make a quick wireframe of what I want Figma's UI to look in Apple with, like the Vision OS. And then I'll start working on the real design. This is going to be a quick design. This is not too in-depth, like this is not a case study, but this is just a exploration of how these complex UIs can transfer over to Vision OS where you don't have such a precise pointing device like a mouse. It's done through your eyesight and the eye tracking may not always be too accurate. So let's explore that and see the results. So for starting with the research, I went to Apple's WWDC 2023 keynotes and there I found a few keynotes on designing for spatial inputs, spatial interfaces and stuff. And I started with designing for spatial input. And there they talked about how to make the interface feel comfortable, easy to use, responsive, and intentional. They talked about keeping the most important things on the screen in the middle, like, cause that's where it is easier, easiest for the users to look at. And as the importance of the elements keep decreasing, you can keep moving them towards the side. They also talked about keeping all the elements in the field of view of the user so that they don't miss out on any important controls and they talked about how we can use depth which is a new dimension in the user interfaces of moving things closer to you or farther from you to grab less or more attention accordingly and then they talked about what kind of shapes to use like using rounded shapes draws eyes to the center of the shape using sharp shapes draws eyes to the corners of the shapes this might result in less precise eye tracking so that's why they recommend using softer rounder shapes. Avoid using anything that takes your attention away from the middle of the button because that can mess with the eye tracking. And then they talk about the padding, the sizing of the buttons and stuff like that. Then they also talk about the scaling for the UI and how the UI scales if you push it back so that the size of the text and images and buttons stay the same because generally if you push something back it becomes smaller right but in this case when the ui or the panel or the window is shifted backwards it becomes larger so that the perceived size of stuff remains the same and it is still easy to easy for you to look at stuff and it's not too small and it's easy for you to control using your eye tracking and pinches then they talked about making it responsive having hover effects for stuff and then making sure that the whole user interface feels intentional and there shouldn't be anything which feels kind of out of place general user experience guidelines they mentioned making sure that you give enough feedback since there is no touch so you have to give a spatial audio feedback or maybe a visual feedback because when you touch things physically you get a tap haptic feedback on your fingers from the object but in this case you're not able to do that so to make sure your user user stays engaged and knows what's happening you give a visual or auditory feedback they mentioned using recognizable actions or familiar actions to control the ui like pinching for pinching in and out for zooming with two fingers uh scrolling using two fingers pinching to select like tapping your two fingers together to selecting like keeping it familiar and easy to understand for the users and then other things like slashing or something that should be those actions should also be similar to what a user would do in real life the next talk is about designing for special user interfaces and in there they talk about how the design should look and stay consistent they also talk about the icons being just layers of png images with like max three layers and they'll do the 3d stuff on its own you just upload 2d images of the three layers background foreground and the second foreground and it'll make the specular highlights shadows and stuff on its own they also talk about the material that the whole windows use and maybe this is the only time Apple is giving importance to windows in their keynotes. Long, anyways. So they talk about how there is no specific light and dark modes in this uh, in this OS. It's all perceived 
by the background and the material of the windows or the panels need to be dynamic enough to accommodate for whatever the background is and the content on the window should be visible in any scenarios. They mention not using opaque windows because that might hinder people being able to see the background which you probably want to have in an AR interface and then they talk about different kinds of materials for different things like if there's a secondary panel on the same window it should be darker selected stuff should be lighter so even on the main panel if you select something or you're hovering on something it should, or if it's a button on top of it so you can make the background of the button specifically lighter like in this book example they put a darker background behind it make the price lighter they also talked about the font the text how they made the regular body medium and the semi bold titles as bold to improve legibility on top of those transparent backgrounds or semi-transparent backgrounds they also talk about something very important which is called vibrancy so it's about using the background of the window to make the text more legible so you can see the difference here like it's that is what they mean by vibrancy like making sure that the panel is not too dull so that the text is not visible at all i feel that vibrancy is a very important factor when designing for vision os they also talk about how you how to use colors so if you're using colors make the background of the button the color you want it to be instead of making the text because that way it is more legible and you can just simply make the text white color then they talk about button sizing and stuff padding for example you would want buttons to be 60 points big and they can be smaller than that but the area that you're able to select the button should be 60 points and then they talk about how to show feedback like the hover animations again and then dis disabled buttons would not have the hover animation at all and then they give a cheat code for corner radius so it's the corner radius of the inner element plus the padding should be equal to the corner radius of the outer element then they go into detail about pop-up menus drop down menus and overlay menus stuff like that how to design that and they talk about input fields and how it's best that we use their system components and not make our own because that way everything stays consistent like Apple usually does for their applications then they talk about something very important which is ornaments they call this ornaments it's basically on the left you have your tab bar whereas on the bottom you have the action button so on the bottom it's always going to be buttons for some actions so you don't need additional circles around them to like show that there are buttons there are always going to be buttons and that's those are the ornaments whereas your tab bar on the bottom of the phone would become the tab bar on the left side then they make the comparison using an iPad then they go into detail about pop-up menus drop down menus and overlay menus stuff like that how to design that shifting the main window back a bit and then bringing the, the pop-up menu in front like the stuff we had in the previous talk and the last talk which I see from Apple before we start designing the principles of status Principles of spatial design. Holy shit, spatial is such a hard word to say. Anyways, so they talk about what are the basic principles like material and the immersiveness, how you can make your experiences, your applications feel more immersive. They talk about keeping the experiences familiar, human-centered, dimensional, immersive, authentic, all those fancy words. And they talk about keeping they talk about keeping the layout of the applications familiar. And then they talk about how to make the windows, the point system, the sizing and stuff, how you can drag and make the window bigger or smaller in size push it forwards or backwards and then they also talk about not not placing content on the top and the bottom because that's the way the human head is made it's harder to look top and bottom than left and right so place additional content on the left and right talk about field of view ergonomics movement of the windows they also say that it is very important that you keep your app windows stationary they don't move along with your head because otherwise you might feel a bit of nausea and then like you might that might feel a bit uncomfortable so you can like there is action to bring like if you turn around and you want the window to be in front of you again there is action for that so you can do that but make sure the window does not move with you 
and yeah that's pretty much it so that's the research i did and now let's hop on to figma I, as you saw i was taking screenshots in between the presentations and pasting it onto figma and i'll be referencing those screenshots to make the wireframe and then the final ui design so let's get on with the wireframe process so i just make random rectangles like where stuff would be and then just write what is supposed to be in that rectangle that's how I usually do wireframes, like super simple, super basic. Then I start finding a few good backgrounds because backgrounds are really important. Like for presentation purposes, yeah, you want a beautiful background, but make sure that your user interface works for all kinds of background because you don't know where your users might be using your applications. Like they could be sitting in a bathroom for all you know. After finalizing the background to work on, I started experimenting with the material of the glass on which the application is going to be based on. And it was really hard, like you had to mess around with the blur. Like you can you can see in the video that I'm messing around with the blur, the background blur, the color, the transparency a lot because uh, it had to work for all kinds of backgrounds. So I checked on the light one as well as the dark one. I checked it a few times and yeah, so, and then I referenced all of this with the ones that they show in their keynote presentations and I compared them and I tried to get the best possible outcome and and after getting a satisfactory result, I started using that. I made them into styling since all the background glass is going to be the same. I start placing around the elements on the screen and start seeing how the spacing would work, how the elements would be beside each other and how how much spacing does it need to have what buttons need need a background like a lighter background to show that there are buttons which ones don't need and there are which buttons don't need a background behind them so just playing around with that i'm trying to make the menus first the one on the top and then the ornament on the bottom and the me and the main tab bar on the left so yeah i work on that then i start working on the main work area uh, in the middle and since this is all going to be mostly controlled I, i'm thinking that this is going to be mostly controlled with our eyesight so i'm thinking of making the selection box also different because this time the selection box can't be too precise like it can't be just simple single blue line like we have in figma normally like you can see me working when i select something there's like a blue line and the corners are like squares that doesn't work i need to like the target area for the eye tracking to work properly needs to be a bit bigger so i make the selection a bit different after figuring all of that out now comes the hardest part making the side menus like the attribute section on the right that was so hard i first of all i had to figure out the material for making it a bit darker that was pretty easy but then you have the tabs that took a bit of time with the specular highlights getting the specular highlights right and had to work a bit on that after that was done now comes the trickiest part i did not know how to change the layout of so many buttons like do i make the menu wider do i like just push the buttons below each other do i have multiple rows of the buttons how do i lay out like do i combine a few buttons do i remove a few buttons because they don't make sense to be using in vision os it was too much and i had to think a lot on this and what should be what should be the primary color which you can see easily and what should be the secondary color because i don't want everything to be just pure white because now everything's asking for your attention i just want the interactable parts to be white and everything else to be the secondary color which is not that prominent and how would the spacing work am i still following 60 point area system to select everything with your eye gaze to make sure that i'm following that i to think about all of these things and make sure that everything looks fine too and then i figured out imagine we have like 10 effects on a single layer how would that work for now i just decided to show just one fill it had to be a scroll scrollable window you just scroll simply and then you see whatever is below i know like the strokes and the effects would be hidden most of the time but since all the target areas all the actionable things need to be so much bigger than than they are in your computers or laptop because you can precisely move your cursor to a place and then click on it here the eye tracking i'm guessing needs a bigger target area that's why all of these elements that need to be interactable need so much space around them and all the icons need to be at least a bit bigger than you would usually have on your on your desktop pc or mac whatever then after the right side attribute uh, section was done i had to think of how the layers and the pages and the assets part 
and the search part would work on the left side so i kept it hidden the button on the top beside the figma icon is what toggles the left menu because i'm guessing like in my personal use i don't interact with the layer tab as much you need the right side always open at all times but the left side i'm guessing uh, you don't you don't actually use it that much unless you're using a lot of masks and stuff or like uh moving things into and out of frame or like uh, something like that so I think the layer panel could be hidden if you need more working space and being able to hide and unhide the left side layers panel is a good choice so I did that there's a layers and assets tab there won't be any drop down for pages in this case I'm guessing because this is too much to fit in such a small space and everything needs to be a bit bigger than they usually are I made the left side of it and it was looking pretty good like it looks pretty familiar to how Figma looks on your desktop and that that's what Apple recommended to do that keep the interactions the experience familiar but yeah so i just wanted to try this out and get a look of how these complex apps these data and element heavy interfaces would look like in vision os and so yeah this is the final design But I thought we can do a bit more with this. So what if you want the workspace to be bigger? So I made one more variation for this. I put the tabs and the attributes section in different windows altogether. And the workspace was its own window. And I wanted to feel like you can stretch the workspace itself freely apart from the layers panels and the attribute panels. And that would give much more free workspace area to the users, I guess. So this might be a better solution. And and at the end, I mocked up both the designs on a light background and a dark background too, just to make sure that the elements on the glass material are usable and legible on both the backgrounds. So yeah, I had to change the specular highlights a bit because in the light background, the light which was shining through was white, but on the dark background, the light on the left side is orange. Okay, while recording this video, something really funny happened. Apple just dropped their Vision OS design library for Figma and they have all the material specular highlights and all the components built into it. And I just wasted a lot of time making those components myself. So yeah, that happened. So that was my experience making a complex UI design for Vision OS and hope you liked the video. Hope I inspired you to make something similar of your own. Try out making something for Vision OS yourself and I'll link the resources by Apple down below in the description so that you don't have to make things from scratch like I did and hope you liked the video and don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, subscribing, commenting, sharing and see you in the next video.